Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate simulation of 5 level cascaded H-bridge multi-level inverter in MATLAB Simulink. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it so that you will be getting the videos that we post regularly. Alright, let's get started. So this is the circuit diagram of a 5 level cascaded H-bridge multi-level inverter. So if you carefully observe this circuit, it basically contains two inverter circuits that are cascaded in this particular fashion. You have a resistive load that is considered in this particular circuit. I'll be considering a supply voltage of 100 volt. So what is the expected waveform and why do we need such a configuration? That is one of the most important things to remember before starting any simulation circuits. So if you carefully observe here, if you uh, draw a sinusoidal waveform, you can represent this almost in a form of a sinusoidal wave. In case of an inverter, a normal square wave inverter, you, uh, the output that you'll get is only a square wave and converting a single step square wave uh, will be quite challenging by applying Fourier series or Fourier transforms for that matter. But over here, when you are almost getting a sinusoidal waveform in this particular fashion, so this gives you a sinusoidal wave as a whole. So uh, it is very very easy to uh, get a sinusoidal waveform at the output terminals by using such a configuration. So based on different levels like 7 level and the level goes on increases, the number of steps also will consequently increase and the representation of close to a sinusoidal wave can also be achieved. As a result, we go for such type of a configuration. Now the major challenge is how do we uh, ensure that the switches operate in this particular fashion because for single phase inverter it is pretty straightforward we have done it in our previous video but how do we achieve it for so many switches how when should we trigger what switch that is one of the most important questions that everyone will be having while starting the simulation uh, trust me after watching this video you will be able to analyze that on your own so let's go into our next important slide that is about switching sequence so that will give you a clear picture of how to set the pulse width and the delay for each of the pulse generator blocks in MATLAB so if you carefully observe this is with respect to the working I'm not explaining the working of a multi-level inverter in case you want to uh, you, in case you want me to explain that I'll do another video on that please do let me know in the comment section but this is how it will be operating this is a switching sequence so uh, now how do we understand this table gives you an uh, indication of the delay and pulse width and how do we understand and uh, try to correlate with respect to the switching sequence in MATLAB. So over here if you carefully observe these are the states 0 indicates 0 is the voltage the output voltage V indicates suppose I'm assuming a supply voltage of 100 volt we have to get 0 volt at the initial stage and then first step should be at 100 volt second step should be at 200 volt again it should come back at uh, 100 volt again it should go to 0 again it should go to minus 100 minus 200 minus 100 again comes back to 0 and the sequ sequence repeats so how do we achieve this so if you carefully observe uh, we need to set the delay and pulse width over here uh, we are giving a factor of 0 0.02 because frequency that we are considering is 50 hertz so 1 by 50 is nothing but 0 0.02 for one complete cycle that is our assumption that is made so for 0 0.02 uh, divided by 8 why we are doing uh, it as divided by 8 is because we have eight different switches so divide it by 8 and multiply it by 0 why are we multiplying it by 0 here so this value is a factor this 0 0.02 divided by 8 is common throughout all the blocks so you don't have to remember or worry about that now we have to re remember about the multiplication factor with respect to the delay so if you carefully observe it should start right away it should be one one indicates that the switch should conduct so it should conduct without any delay if if it is at this position so that is why it is zero if you carefully observe s2 it should conduct right away as well as a result it is zero if you observe s3 it should conduct only after one two three uh, if you start from this point it is zero one two three four five so it should conduct from five as a result you are writing it five again for uh, with respect to s4 it is conducting after zero one so one is indicated so this is how here for s7 it is six that is one two three four uh S7 is here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So uh, from 0 we have to start while counting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So enter 6 here. So based on this we will be entering the delay. I hope this concept is clear now. So now what is the pulse width? How do we enter or determine the pulse width? Let us not worry about our operation now. Let us look at only pulse width. So if you carefully observe this. Uh, pulse width will be in terms of percentage so with respect to 100% 100% will be the multiplication factor 8 is the common uh, multi division factor because there are 8 uh, switches that are used so what should be the value here this is the only value that will change 8 
uh, and 100 will be constant throughout so we have to only worry about this particular factor in entire switches so how do we decide that if you carefully observe we have 1 2 3 4 5 so enter 5 over here that is 5 divided by 8 into 100 that should be the pulse width because it should be on for 5 states of the output voltage secondly what should be done we have s2 and it should be on at this point if you carefully observe it is 1 so here just forget about the rest of the portion that is with respect to our operation i'll explain it so 1 divided by 8 now again with respect to s3 if you carefully observe it should be on for a duration of 1 2 3 so 3 divided by 8 into 100 so this is how we will be entering the pulse width i hope this is also understood now what is this concept of our operation it's quite confusing now isn't it so it's very simple guys uh, if you carefully observe with respect to the switching sequence now with respect to only our operation where we want we we'll look at only that and that will give you a clear picture for s2 if you look at this 1 0 0 0 again 1 in all the other cases if you observe it will be 1 throughout and then it will become 0 or it will be 0 throughout and then it will become 1 or it will become 1 at the initial stages or 1 here and it will become 0 throughout so these cases we don't need another uh, pulse generator block but in cases where it will be 1 again it goes to 0 0 0 again comes back to 1 1 and so this cannot be entered in a single pulse generator block it will be quite confusing if we do so we can also do it it's not that we cannot achieve that but doing it with an R operation is much simpler so from here to here we are doing it with respect to this if you are observing here so 1 divided by 8 so 1 is there so 1 divided by 8 again from here if you observe the pulse width, that is 1 2 3 4 4 states divided by 8 into 100 8 uh, divided by 8 into 100 is a common factor so 4 is here so our operation of these two will give the exact pattern so when this is on with respect to it it will add and it will give when this is on with respect to this cycle it will give so based on that we will be doing our operation now again if we observe with respect to s5 it will be 1 1 1 1 1 1 initially so there will be a 6 ones here 6 divided by 8 into 100 and we need an R operation because it goes to 0 again and we cannot again make it equal to 0 the delay cannot change simultaneously at that point of time so we will be we will with respect to this again we'll consider this as a different cycle altogether only this switch with respect to minus V state so what will happen that is 1 divided by 8 this is the only thing that is remaining and the delay so how how much is the delay that is one of the most important things i did not talk about with respect to our operation so with respect to this circuit if you see the delay over here uh, with respect we are talking with respect to s5 so it is with respect to multiplication factor of 7 so why is it 7 1 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 at the seventh cycle again it should start so that is why our operation of these two delays will give you the exact operation that we want initially there should be zero delay because multiplication with zero will give you zero so it will keep on conducting s5 up to this point and then it goes to zero at some point and then it comes back to one by giving this particular delay so this is how we will be able to achieve the switching sequence in MATLAB if this concept is clear take a screenshot of this and keep it aside refer to this and we'll be doing the simulation in MATLAB let's go to MATLAB and start all right here we are in MATLAB so click on Simulink library browser and we can directly search for the components that we want so a lot of people will go into these and search for uh, the components that they want I don't suggest that go through this procedure because it will be really convenient for you to simulate it as quick as possible so we need a voltage measurement block as well the reason why power give block is required is because it uh, is very important for the simulation to run so uh, it converts the samples with respect to the simulation time that you have if you don't have a power view block it will throw you an error while simulating it you can check that as well so once that is done we need a DC voltage source so search for DC voltage and choose the ones that are there in black that is used for power electronic applications the ones that are there in blue are choose usually used for operational amplifier and digital signal processing it is not that they're never used for power electronics application but they usually used so add this block uh, the DC voltage source and then we need a MOSFET switch so search for MOSFET and you will be getting it right at the bottom 
bottom choose the ones that are there in black uh, we are not using a thyristor because we need a commutation circuit to turn it off and such a circuit will again increase the complexity and the cost of the circuit also will increase however we can go for igbt as well so it depends on your requirement so once that is done we need a series rlc branch uh, which is basically converted to a resist load later on in our circuit and we also need a pulse generator in order to trigger these switches so search for pulse generator block and add that we also need a logical operator or operator because uh, that is essentially required for the or operation to take place as i explained there so choose logical operator and later we can convert it to or so add this block as well so once this is also added we need to have a scope in order to see the output waveform isn't it so search for scope and add that block as well so we've added all the components that we want with respect to our circuit let us slowly go with respect to the circuit diagram and give you and you will be getting a clear picture of how to simulate this in matlab so we will be placing the power cube block here rotate this by using control r and uh, we will be using a resist load and uh, let us change that value to be equal to 100 ohm just as equal to the supply voltage so for simplicity we are doing it so rotate this in this particular fashion be very careful drain should be in the upper direction direction so should be in the downward direction if you go wrong here the entire simulation will be wrong so be very careful a lot of students do a mistake with respect to that disable the measurement port we don't want another port just for confusion purposes we don't want that so control c control v copy paste this and we need another couple of them uh, in this particular fashion let us build a first one h bridge in this particular fashion so once you have four of them control c and control v and we will be placing the other four right underneath these so we need another dc voltage uh, source over here so uh, place it in this particular fashion and once that is done let us uh, connect the first bridge let us complete the circuit with respect to the first bridge and then let us uh, go it uh, go with respect to the second bridge so first bridge is connected in this particular fashion second bridge again will be connecting drain to drain source to drain here source to drain here source to source shorted and we'll be giving it to the dc supply in this particular fashion so once this is also done we'll be connecting uh, a resist load that is between these two points so be very careful while cascading them as well and we can directly take a tapping from here press ctrl and drag and drop at this point so this is how we will cascade so cascading part is also done now what is Once this is done let us get into the heart of our circuit which is basically the pulse generator block so double click on it and uh, we need to change the time period to 0 0.02 according to the frequency f is equal to 1 by uh, t so based on that or t is equal to 1 by f based on that so pulse width so how do we enter that let us follow the same sequence in which it is entered earlier so 5 divided by 8 so why we have to do it this way because uh, we can just copy paste this for the other pulse generator blocks as well we need to only change the factor in which it will change so we don't have to enter it again and again so enter 5 divided by 8 and here phase delay is given as 0 0.02 divided by 8 so be very careful with respect to it into 100 so star gives you the multiplication operation it will ma mathematically take the formula this is basically the formula that it has to accept so give it as 0 so once this is done click on ok we are going to trigger the first switch so be very careful while connecting it so as soon as that pulse generator is done uh, give it to the gate connection otherwise we might go wrong while connecting it to the corresponding terminals control c control v so paste it here we need a logical or operator for switches too so click on that and click on ok let us connect it first and then give it to s2 now let us click on the pulse generator block and change the values so with respect to s2 we have 1 divided by 8 that is a pulse width with respect to uh, the first block and we have uh, this to be the same click on ok double click on the second block over here and with respect to our operation we have 4 divided by 8 so change that to be equal to 4 divided by 8 into 100 and this should be 0 0.02 divided by 8 into 4 so enter that and click on ok once that is done this is already triggered s3 and s4 we don't want any uh, or operation so copy paste only the pulse generator blocks so double click on the pulse generator here and s3 it requires 3 divided by 8 so enter 3 here and uh, the delay should be 0 0.02 whole divided by 8 into 5 5 is the multiplication factor here enter that click on ok and trigger that particular switch again with respect to s4 we have uh, 3 divided by 8 so 
basically enter 3 here and uh, the multiplication factor is 1 so enter 1 so be very careful if you go wrong in any of the steps here uh, with respect to triggering it you will not get the right output so be very careful with respect to it so s5 and s6 again requires um, a couple of uh, pulse generator blocks and an or operation so control c control v copy paste that we need an or operation as well so control c control v copy paste that as well so we'll be placing this slightly outside so that it will be very easy for us to connect that uh, we also need uh, a couple of uh, pulse generator blocks for s6 as well and an or operation for s6 as well so connect it in this particular fashion now we'll go into this block for s5 we have it to be equal to 6 divided by 8 into 100 so enter 6 here so once that is done the phase delay is nothing but the same and uh, with respect to the or operation block we have 0 0.0 uh, with respect to this we have 1 divided by 8 so it is the same so we have 0 0.02 into 8 multiplication factor is 7 so click on ok once that is done connect it to the or, or operation block logical operator connect it to the gate terminals now we'll be left out with s6 so with respect to s6 the initial pulse width should be equal to 2 divided by 8 so enter 2 here and the phase delay is given as to be equal to multiplication factor of 0 so keep it as it is again with respect to this block we have uh, the pulse width to be equal to 5 divided by 8 so enter 5 over here and uh, with respect to the multiplication factor with respect to the phase delay we have it to be equal to 3 so enter that so once that is done click on ok and connect these two together and we'll be connecting it to the gate block in this particular fashion once that is done we need another pulse generator block uh, a couple of them in fact so copy paste that and place it appropriately here and now we want the multiplication factor uh, with respect to this we'll be changing it to 1 divided by 8 into 100 and the pulse width phase delay here is multiplication factor of 6 so change that accordingly so enter 6 and click on ok trigger that switch and at last we have one more connected to the gate and double click on the uh, block and the factor here is 1 divided by 8 again so we'll be entering that and the multiplication factor here is 2 so enter 2 and once that is done click on ok so we have triggered all of them now we have to measure the output voltage across the resistor load that is between these two points so we'll be doing that and connect it to the scope in this particular fashion let us check the supply voltage once so we have 100 that is exactly what our supply should be and the resistor load is also 100 now we will be setting the simulation time to 1 because resistor load is basically a static load we don't have to go for a huge simulation time because there will not be a lot of transients and all those things so run simulation and let us wait for some time for the simulation to run double click on the scope in order to see the waveform now we can zoom in the waveform in this particular fashion by using this so if you carefully observe 0 100 200 again comes back to 100 comes back to 0 minus 100 minus 200 again minus 100 and 0 this is exactly what we have to get and we are getting exactly uh, with respect to the output waveform so i hope the simulation of um, a file file level multi-level cascaded h bridge inverter is understood so you would able to be able to simulate this in matlab so if you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below if you like this video please like it sub subscribe to it and uh, share to a lot of other people as well thanks for watching this video please do keep supporting